Sadly, it's our last episode of the semester, but you know what that means. We have to leave you with plenty of new news to think about over winter break. Hello, I'm Erin Holly, And I'm Casey Medico. A south themed alcoholic beverage, a Philly team with limited edition jerseys, and someone breaking a record for oldest person in the country? You don't want to miss this news, so stay tuned. You're watching LTV News, where the action never stops. Hello and welcome to LTV News, where we bring you everything from 20th and Olney Avenue, Philadelphia, and the world. There's a lot to catch up on in the next half hour, as Tori had the opportunity to sit down with the new LaSalle student behind the Explorer's costume this season. On November 17th, the 14th District of the Philadelphia Police Department lobby was transformed into a dining area. Students and staff from yours truly, LaSalle University, served Thanksgiving dinner to officers from the 35th and 14th districts. Students have been serving meals to these first responders for the past 23 years as a way of saying thank you. One LaSalle student who volunteered for the event said, quote, I'm doing the sweet potatoes and green beans, unquote. The Thanksgiving meal is a chance for the officers to take advantage of this time they have by winding down and start celebrating the holiday early. Author of Silver Linings Playbook, a LaSalle alum, releases a new, a new novel. Matthew Quick, class of 96, majored in secondary education in English. He is widely known for his novel, which adapted into an Academy Award-winning film in 2012, Silver Linings Playbook, starring Bradley Cooper and Jennifer Lawrence. Quick says he has another novel made into a film, which is out now on Netflix. His newest novel, We Are the Lights, is now available for purchase. He says that LaSalle was like a womb for him, a safe four years where he could explore different aspects of his personality. Quick met his wife at LaSalle, which also helped him figure out who he was meant to be. His new novel is about a small, traumatized community comes together to heal. Quick hopes that his fellow LaSallean brothers and sisters join him in his recent accomplishment. This day, Tuesday, November 29th, is the globally recognized worldwide day of giving called Giving Tuesday. It happens annually on the Tuesday after Thanksgiving. This day is to celebrate generosity, philanthropy, and collaboration. Giving Tuesday gifts to LaSalle University can count towards the Charter Challenge President Daniel J. Allen announced the Charter Challenge in his inauguration address. The Charter Challenge is a single-year, $10 million fundraising initiative to strengthen the campus and academic experiences of LaSalle students. There are seven areas where Gifts of Giving Tuesday will go towards including the LaSalle Fund for Student Scholarships, the President's Strategic Initiative Fund, Honors Program Scholarship Initiative, the funds for each of the schools on campus, and the Explorer Fund for Athletics. There are a lot of fun facts many students don't know about LaSalle University's 160 years of history. The late Los Angeles Lakers star Kobe Bryant once attended basketball camps at LaSalle as a kid. His father, Joe Bryant, was a LaSalle student and a top basketball player. Joe left campus after his junior year to enter the NBA as part of the Philadelphia 76ers. He returned to LaSalle in 1993 as a men's basketball assistant coach for three seasons. Also during the mid-20th century, LaSalle's newest students needed to follow a dress code. Students were required to wear a button on their left lapel and a tie with a LaSalle L. In addition, from 1962 until the mid-1970s, the Explorer mascot was actually an astronaut in the mid-90s. LaSalle introduced a blue superhero named the Tick that didn't stick. A group of LaSalle students who are studying entrepreneurship started a student-led project where they created a LaSalle-themed vodka seltzer. While this alcoholic beverage is not affiliated with LaSalle University, it is titled La Seltzer. The La Seltzer dropped on October 28th, just two weeks before homecoming weekend. They are served at Deke's Barbecue, a bar in Germantown just down the street from La Salle. In addition, home delivery is also available for the La Seltzers. People must be over 21 years of age to order with a valid ID. A four pack of the Seltzers costs only $8. The Seltzer is a strawberry lemonade flavor and it contains Kiki Vodka, a premium made in Pennsylvania spirit. Delivery drivers for La Seltzers accept tips through cash or Venmo. 
More information and ordering instructions can be found online at www.kikivodka.myshopify.com. With the Explorers basketball season in full swing, Tori had the opportunity to interview sophomore student Alexis Sanchez about her new experience as the Explorer mascot. Check it out. Hi, my name is Tori Walker, and today I'll be interviewing Alexis Sanchez, hey, who is a sophomore here at LaSalle. She's the new mascot for LaSalle University. She's the first woman who holds a position in precisely seven years. Hey, Alexis, how are you doing today? Thanks for stopping by on the show. I'm great. Thank you so much for having me. Definitely, for sure. So basically, talk about like what was what, what made you gravitate towards this position, like uh, as a woman as well. What made you wanted want to be a mascot for LaSalle? So um, honestly, I never really had plans of ever becoming the mascot at mm -hmm. LaSalle. I know last year um, I wasn't really involved in the campus right. at all. I rarely had friends, probably just a few of them. Mm -hmm. So you know, one day I just decided, you know, I should we should go to a basketball game for fun. You know, get out there, probably meet new people. And yeah. plus, in high school, I was involved in sports and I loved basketball games. So okay. I'm just like, let's go. Mm -hmm. So we went to the last men's home game, mm -hmm. and for some reason, I couldn't even focus on the game at all. Really? Yeah, I was just looking at the mascot because you know, previously in high school, I did like a viral dance moves for my entire high school. Wow. So when I went to the game with the old friend, I'm you know looking over and I'm telling mm -hmm. her like you know, what is this mascot doing? Yeah, like, if yeah. I was the mascot, I'd be, like, dancing exactly. around, doing cartwheels, busting down like, a whole bunch of moves. Right. So, you know, she's, like, paying attention to the game, but my eyes are just drawn on the mascot the entire time. And I'm just like, if I want to get involved, what, mm -hmm. like, better way to do that than become the mascot? Exactly. So, you know, yeah, that's what really, like, persuaded me to, like, you know, do that. I'm just like, this is a great, you know, great way to get involved, Definitely. really. Definitely. So, obviously, you're the first woman to hold the position in seven years. So, like... Was there any hesitation? You know, I know that with women as you, um, women in general, you know, there's a lot of stereotypes women go through, whether that's, you know, in society right now, women can't drive or, you know, women are too weak and emotional. So was there anything in your mind that really said, like, you know, I'm a woman, like, I don't care. Like, I really want to do this, so I'm going to do it, you know? Well, if I'm being honest, Tori, like, that completely, like, crossed my mind. Like, when it comes to yeah, things right. like that, I feel like I can do anything I want if I put my mind to That's it. Good. So I had no worries of being, whether, I didn't even know there was a woman before who was the mascot mm -hmm. LaSalle. So, I mean, that's great news to hear, but, you know, either way, I'd, I'd still do the, you know, the job, and I, you know, want to do it the best that I can. So that's something that I really kept in mind and wasn't really focused on those stereotypes they yeah. have. Yeah, that's awesome. I love to hear that. So, obviously, LaSalle University had a big week last week. It's homecoming. How, did, how was that as being your first homecoming here at LaSalle? I had a little bit of jitters really? in the beginning, just a little bit, but mm -hmm. when I'm in the costume, I feel like, you know, I'm not even Alexis anymore. Like, I'm just yeah. the explorer. I'm representing the entire university. Exactly. I'm just like, I don't care what anyone says, anyone thinks. I'm going to be the goofiest that I can, <laughs> do the most silliest dance moves, you know, say hi to everyone, mm -hmm. even if they probably see me in campus or not. So it, it was a little bit hard, but it was so fun and so worth Definitely. it. I can imagine. There was a lot of people there. You know, I was, um, I was in a little block party thing for a little bit, had food. It was so good. Um, so I, along myself, along with many others out there, want to know, what is it like? Is it hot? I can't imagine. It got to be hot. <laughs> so, like, was it hot? Do you, do you drink water at any time before, like, halftime or anything like that? What is it like being in that suit during games? So luckily this year um, we did get a new costume. Really? So brand new. So I'm the first in there. Okay. Um, now it's now it's smelling, yeah. because of me. but it's because of the sweat. I yeah, mean, yeah. I mean, I shower literally, exactly. but the sweat, like it's, it's like it's, so it's wet. gonna it's gonna get sweaty, obviously. Exactly. Right? Mm -hmm. So when I put the costume on, every time, like you know, especially for homecoming, it was like the really big day. It was like really hard to mm. like adjust to it. Like the head was wobbling everywhere. It didn't really fit right. Yeah. Um, and it's just extremely hot that day like I mean like my bangs were dripping sweat really? all over I constantly had to like you know go back and wipe my face mm -hmm. um, I was just using the gloves to you know clean the sweat off but as far as water breaks you know during games um I'm like allowed to go back behind the bleachers and yeah. you know take a few sips of water here and there as long as like you know I'm like not doing it too much and staying back there too mm -hmm. long but mm -hmm. I mean sometimes I forget about my water because I'm having so much fun on the floor really? like you know just doing whatever yeah so yeah, it's so like, very hot. Are, are you used to it yet or not yet? You're still getting getting in the flow of things and like, are you used to it? What do you think? Um, I'm definitely getting used to it. I feel like every time I get in the costume, it gets better and better for me. Like oh, really? I, 
I learned how to adjust things properly, like the head doesn't wobble as much. Mm -hmm. So the previous game we had this week, mm -hmm. it was much better. I was dancing with 300 kids and the head wow. wasn't wobbling. So yeah. it was really good. You know, they're right. touching me and stuff like that. So I'm like, okay, the costume is getting there. But um, it is heavy on my shoulders and my mm -hmm. back. After homecoming, I woke up and I'm like, wow, this is like. I can imagine. I'm like, can someone get the mascot right. personal trainer exactly. or something? Because it was, it was hurting a lot. Right. But Dang. Okay. It gets so, good. Like, talk a little bit about, like, what's your routine? Like, what do you do beforehand maybe to get ready? Do you drink, say, hydrated or, um, you know, try to, try to be in your element? What's your, what's your routine like before putting on the legendary suit of the Explorer? So um, I'm not sure if anyone sees me on campus, but I walk around on my beats. Yeah. So for the past two weeks, ever since, um, I, you know, I've been in the mascot role, I've been playing Shakira Hipster Line. Wow, so it's okay. been like my hype up song. And really? I'm like, you know, okay, don't be nervous. Like, you know, when you go in the costume, you're not Alexis anymore, you're the explorer. Exactly. So, you know, you know, I pray too, and I'm like, okay, you got this. Like, don't care what anyone says, don't care what anyone thinks, just do you and yeah. be the best mascot that you can be okay. and put on like the best show. So that's really what like gets me up there. Um, as far as like packing my bag to go in the mascot, mm -hmm. I always make sure um, I have like my leggings and my long shirt because that's like what, that's what like goes best with the mascot, like under it, like the mm -hmm. uniform part. Yeah. So I always pack my bag beforehand. Definitely. I love to hear that. So how did your family feel when you first um, broke the news to them? How did they feel about this whole situation? Um, they were very supportive. My dad told me that I'm something else. Really? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Okay. He, he, I mean, for the most part, they're not really surprised because they're like, oh, like, I expect they know you. Yeah, exactly. They're like I expect nothing less. Like I'm not surprised at all. Um, I'm really looking forward to them being there at the games yeah. because it'll be like really great. But they're super supportive about it and super happy. So one last thing, what advice would you have to young girls out there? Um, for young girls out there, I would just say, just do the things that you wouldn't think you should do. Like, for example, like don't care what anyone thinks. Like if you feel like you should do it, do it. Like, you know, be confident in who you are. Don't care what anyone thinks or says. Just really focus on what you want to do. Focus on your heart and just have fun. Because at the end of the day, you know, whatever you may be scared of will open opportunities for you, open doors for you. You get to network and meet new people regardless. Yes. So it's just something important to keep in mind. Yes. Do the things that other people wouldn't do. Yes, I love to hear that. Well, Alexis, that's all we have for today. Thanks for stopping by, and feel free to come by the Communication Center whenever you want. you got a free pass in here whenever you want. Thank you so much. Yep. Now back over to the desk with Aaron and KC. It's time for our first break, but coming up, hear about multiple free sites to see fun Christmas lights in Philly this holiday season. Stay tuned to learn more. my exam. Is that you? Do you sit around bored all day? Do you want to watch television shows where you can look at the people and be like, I can be that. That's me. Well, you should check out LaSalle TV. That rhyme. We got entertainment news at Backstage Pass. We got regular news at LTV News. We got sports news at Sports Talk and Sports Line. And for those of you who really want some fun stuff, Q&A, because down at LaSalle TV, we got a full buffet. <laughs> Thanks, LaSalle TV. Thanks, LaSalle TV. Thanks, LaSalle TV. I still miss my show. Larry Krasner, Philadelphia's now former district attorney, was impeached earlier this month after being accused of engaging in misbehavior that justified removal. The seven articles presented by the Pennsylvania House highlighted a range of accusations, which included the mishandlings of crime, allowing a surge in city homicides, and violating the rights of crime victims. Krasner has also been accused of poor leadership and responsibility in general. 
which is claimed to be evident in the city's current level of crime. The resolution passed with a vote of 107 to 85 in, Republican, in the Republican favor. The next motion will be a trial by state Senate with the date to be determined. For Krasner to be officially impeached, he must be voted against by at least two-thirds of the chamber. With the, with the current political state of our Senate, officials expect him to be out of office very soon. Are you looking for a way to light up the holiday season in Philly this year? Well, you're in luck. There are multiple free Christmas light shows up and running in and around Philadelphia this season. First, there's the iconic Macy's light show inside of the Macy's Center City location. This show features about 100,000 LED lights and is running every day until December 31st, with the exception of Christmas Day. Next, the big screen in the lobby of Comcast in Center City is back in business with the Comcast Holiday Spectacular. It is a 15-minute, family-friendly show that includes holiday songs and performances. This show runs every day on the hour through January 1st. Last but not least, Peddler's Village in Bucks County is another place with beautiful holiday scenery. Peddler's Village lit up with Santa at the Grand Illumination Celebration on November 18th, and the lights display will be up until January 8th. If you find yourself looking for something fun and free to do around Philadelphia this holiday season, check out one or more of these great options. The morning following Thanksgiving, Texas Governor Greg Abbott sent over an additional two busloads of immigrants to seek sanctuary in Philadelphia. In the last 10 days, Abbott has sent four buses of about 150 immigrants in effort to manage the Texas immigration population and call attention to overwhelmed border communities. The 81 travelers were welcomed early Friday morning by city officials and immigrant leaders who accompanied them to a city-run welcome center located in North Philadelphia. These nonprofit organiza organizations, such as the New Sanctuary Movement of Philadelphia, continue to play a critical role in providing this much-needed care and hospitality. Almost all of the new arrivals are seeking, seeking asylum to avoid perse perse persecution in their homelands and have permission to reside in the states. It is unclear how many more buses Governor Abbott will send to Philadelphia. New Jersey Fish and Game Commission voted to reinstate bear hunting due to increased sightings. Governor Phil Murphy previously voted against the hunt, but has recently changed his mind due to an increase in bear sightings around the state. The council explains that human and bear encounters have risen to dangerous levels. Governor Murphy cited predictions by wildlife officials that the state's bear population could grow to more than 4,000 in the next two years. The council approved an emergency rule to allow the bear hunt within the annual six-day shotgun season in December for deer from December 5th through the 10th. Fish and Game Commission outlined the parameters of what would and would not be allowed in the hunt, which includes no cubs smaller than 75 pounds and no female bears with cubs. The Philadelphia 76ers unveiled their city edition uniforms this season. They are primarily white with red accents and the logo of the jersey that says the city of brotherly love. This is the first time the, this is the first time in the team's history the jersey has said the word city of brotherly love. The reasoning for this jersey is to showcase the rich history the city of Philadelphia has offered the game of basketball. According to the 76ers executive advisor, Sonny Hill, quote, these uniforms represent the past, the present, and the future of the game in our city of brotherly love, end quote. The Sixers will wear, wear these jerseys eight times this season and will customize their court to go with the jerseys. Dedicated athletes braved harsh weather conditions earlier this month during the annual Philadelphia Marathon. Although the temperatures were low, enthusiasm was high as supportive friends and family lined the streets to cheer on runners from the Museum District to Germantown. Warming tents were prepped for the 30,000 runners as they arrived as early as 7 a.m. that Sunday. Starting temperatures started around 20 degrees with winds reaching 30 miles per hour. They were the harshest conditions recorded since Philadelphia's Marathon of 2008. Some runners prepped for a difficult run with altered training regimens, giving them an edge in the race. Rosaline Graywall, a 24-year-old, was one of these runners and stated, quote, I just wanted to make sure my lungs could handle it. I didn't want them to burn in the wind, end quote. Truly an impressive feat of athleticism. 
So, Casey, sadly, mm -hmm. it's our last episode of the semester. <sighs> so upsetting. But we do have a ton of Philadelphia news to discuss. Mm -hmm. So, it's the holiday season. We obviously can't look over that. What kinds of fun holiday activities are you going to do around Philly this season? I, this year, so bad, I would love to go ice skating. Uh, I, you know, obviously uh, play ice hockey here at LaSalle. And, oh, um, really? I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, I, uh, I really want to go ice skating in the city. I haven't done that, like, ever. So like, I think be, you want to just go ice skating so you can flex all of your, <laughs> all of your hockey moves on the ice skating <laughs> ring in front of everyone. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it'd be nice just go like leisure skating, you know, right at uh, Center City and you know. Yeah, I, or Penn's Landing. They have the winter yeah, fest. Yeah, I saw they have that there. Uh, that's definitely a place I want to go check out. I'm terrified of ice skating. I would just stand there and hold on to the wall. Uh, I think like little five year olds could probably ice skate back. <laughs> but um, well, it's also the season for basketball as mm -hmm. well as Christmas. So. Mm -hmm. What do you think of the new limited edition Sixers jerseys? Yeah, I love the jerseys this year. I love that they were able to add the city of brotherly love on it. You know, uh, writing that story, uh, you know, clearly uh, it's supposed to represent so much more than just a jersey. It's about the past, the present, and the future of the game of basketball in Philadelphia and how much the city has given to the game. Um, yeah. And I just think... Uh, the way it looks is so clean yeah. and the way that they cust every game they customize the court to go along with the jerseys and it just looks excellent. Yeah, that's super cool. I can't wait to see that. Also, yeah. on the topic of athletes in Philly, the Philadelphia Marathon with the lowest temperatures in history, that's insane. Uh, that is insane for them. I don't know how they're going to be able to do that. I, I know. Yeah, it's crazy. But, well, uh, yeah, we have one more break, but stay tuned to hear uh, more about the fourth grader that saved a life. Stay tuned. Anxiety. But with the help of this latest innovation from Be Normal, he can be normal. Just like everyone else. With the swipe of a finger, you can project happiness, confidence, machismo. Why settle for being real when you can be normal? The Normal Maker. New from Be Normal. This item doesn't really work because there's no such thing as normal. We're all different. What we like, how our brains work. In fact, one in five of us live with mental illness. Don't filter who you are. Start by talking to someone you trust. And remember, there is no normal. A Seattle man on TikTok by the name of Sunday Nobody posted online that he custom built a tomb for a bag of hot Cheetos in an effort to preserve the savory snack, quote, for centuries, end quote. He posted the video to TikTok depicting the whole process from start to finish. Since it was posted, the three-minute video has nearly gained 11 million views. While his day job is working as an animator, he spends his free time creating meme art projects in his art studio as a fun side hobby. He says the hardest part of creating it was the weight as mixing 3,000 pounds of concrete in the 80 pound, pound bags was strenuous according to the TikToker. The entire process took four months and the cost was $1,250 in materials. The location of the crypt remains a secret. Attached is a golden plaque that simply says Flaming Hot Cheetos, along with the ingredients. A Wisconsin nine-year-old elementary school student performed the Heimlich maneuver on a classmate who was choking on food and it may have saved her life. It happened during his lunch. Fourth grader Essie Collier of Racine's Frat Elementary School realized that one of her classmates was in trouble. The lunchroom was empty at the time due to local residents casting their ballots for election. Students were eating in their classrooms. A statement, as he said, quote, I just saw that she was holding her neck and I rushed up there as fast as I can, unquote. She reportedly encircled the student with her arms and started the Heimlich maneuver. 
according to teacher Samantha Bradshaw. After her classmates' airway was opened, she was breathing normally again in a matter of seconds. An Iowa woman celebrated her 115th birthday last Monday, officially making her the oldest human in the United States and the, old, and the tenth oldest in the world. She has been alive through not only both of the Chicago Cubs World Series wins, but also the sinking of the Titanic. All of her children were there for her birthday, including her oldest, who just turned 90 years old. All her kids described her as hardworking and determined. We here at LTV are wishing her the best and happiest of birthdays. It is definitely possible to find some strange things in train stations, but what about a check for $4.7 million? That's right. A German man was traveling to the city of Frankfurt by train, and he saw a piece of paper on the floor. He picked it up, realizing that it was a $4.7 million check made out to the candy company Haribo. The man honestly contacted the company and told them about his findings. They told him to destroy and dispose of the check immediately. A spokesperson for Haribo stated, quote, We were grateful that Mr. Anur took the time to contact us when we were pleased to share a sweet gesture with him as a thank you, unquote. The sweet gesture was sending him a box of six large bags of gummy bears. As we can see, doing the right thing pays off in the end. The house the 1983 movie A Christmas Story was filmed in has gone up for sale in Cleveland, Ohio. The house that is located in Cleveland's Tremont neighborhood was officially put up for market the beginning of last week. The current owner, Brian Jones, put up a for sale sign in the front of the iconic movie location. The asking price has not been made publicly available. Neighboring properties associated with the house are also included in the sale. The listing states, quote, when we say all this can be yours, we're serious. The entire campus is for sale which spans a total of 1.3 acres, including five buildings and seven parcels. Additionally, there are two public and one private parking lots, and two empty lots which create room for further expansion. A Bulgarian woman claims to have the world's biggest lips due to her lip filler addiction. Doctors warn her that with every injection, the risks increase and can be fatal, but it is not stopping at her lips. Andrea Yavona, plans to have her chin done soon. Yvona has had almost 32 different procedures, costing her almost $9,000 to make her look like a living Bratz doll. Yvona gets hyaluronic acid injections every two weeks, costing her $288 every trip. The 25-year-old revealed on her Instagram that she plans to celebrate her birthday by getting jaw and lip filler. She says that, of course, with getting the new filler, she will also keep up with her lips, too. Yovona plans to have the most elongated and pointed chin in the world. Well, that just about does it for this episode of LTV News. But be sure to find us on the web, as well as the rest of LaSalle TV, on our Facebook page. We love to hear your thoughts, so tweet at us using our Twitter handle and start the conversation. If you missed the scoop and want to see it, you can find episodes on our YouTube on our LaSalle TV Philly page. Until next semester, for Tori, Maria, Maddie, and the entire crew, I'm Erin Holly. Thanks for watching LTV News, where the action never stops. And Cheers, we're done. <laughs>